I do genuinely mean this. Do not wait for Zen 5. Just get a 7800X 3D. And wow, when I woke up this morning, I was extra glad that I've been telling you all not to wait for Zen 5, especially when it comes to gaming, for months. In fact, depending on the review you look at, Zen 5 just looks downright terrible, delivering minor uplifts that aren't even consistently uplifts over Zen 4. That's right, some reviewers actually found that Zen 5 failed to even be an upgrade over Zen 4 in some tests. And yeah, upon seeing reviews like this one from Hardware Unboxed or the one from Anantech, I was actually part of the negative Nancy Battalion when it came to my opinion of Zen 5. Well, at first, because then I started to notice something really odd. In Anantech Spec 2017 testing, which many people consider to be the default method of testing for IPC, it showed an IPC uplift totally in line with what AMD marketed for Zen 5, was 13 to 26%. And then when I looked up Tom's Hardware's review, I saw the exact average uplift I was personally expecting a month ago, if actually maybe a bit more, but they had PBO turned on, so it made sense. And so uh, let me actually emphasize how crazy this is. If you were to watch Hardware and Box review, you would think that AMD just wet the bed. But then if you read Tom's Hardware's review today, you would think that AMD has exceptional gaming performance. And indeed, another example like that, Pharonix, again, if you read this review, you'd have walked away saying, wow, Zen 5 is like a new legendary architecture with extremely impressive performance, and it's dominating gaming. And so what the heck is going on here? Why do some reviewers paint Zen 5 in a significantly more positive light than other reviewers? Or do some reviewers not know what they're doing? No, that's not what I think is going on here. What I think went down today is AMD botched this launch harder than I've seen anyone else botch a launch. This was one of the biggest self-owns in history. Let me outline the few things AMD did wrong here that I believe made this go from what should have been a celebration day for them, a victory lap for AMD, into one of the most confusing launches in history. Well, the first thing AMD did wrong is I clearly think it is obvious that this should have been delayed a few more weeks. We already heard about the validation issues that caused Zen 5 to have to be delayed a couple weeks. Clearly, that wasn't enough. I believe all of these Zen 5 products should have been delayed at least till the end of August because clearly the performance is all over the place. And, you know, when you ever you see a launch get way better results in Linux, like a good example of this was early Zen Threadripper reviews when they hadn't quite figured out the scheduling. Then you know that it's just there's something wrong with how the software is utilizing a new architecture in Windows. In fact, PC World has even decided to delay their review after finding anomalies and inconsistencies in their own testing, being baffled by how in some tests something is way higher than expected, and in other tests, well, it looks as bad as what I think Hardware and Box and Gamers Nexus found. But that's the thing, though. That's AMD's fault. That's not their fault. That is AMD's fault for not being clear and upfront about how to get the best performance out of these processes. Processors. And also, again, it is my opinion, we'll see if it ends up true, them launching these processors before they were probably ready. Now, the second thing AMD did wrong today is I just think it's very obvious that the 9700X is hopelessly held back by low power limits, low voltage limits, and bandwidth constraints. Look, Linus found that the 9600X was hitting higher peak boost clocks than the 9700X. That's ridiculous. That means that 65 watts isn't enough for eight Zen 5 cores to really stretch their legs. And not just in multi-threading. That was peak boost, meaning that it's even constraining its single-threading performance, which is just silly. I mean, it's running at 61 degrees Celsius. That's really cool. AMD should have given the 9700X a higher TDP. In fact, if you give it a higher TDP, it roughly matches the 14 core, 14600K with just eight cores. That's insanely impressive. And that's not even the best showing. Der Bauer got the 9700X to get to nearly R9 7900 12 core multi-threading performance. That's 25% higher performance than stock. That is unheard of with modern CPUs. You don't almost ever get anything from overclocking anymore. And then the third and final thing that I think AMD screwed up about today's reviews, you know, Wendell demonstrated with a gut check on the 9600X six core processor that there are great gains to be had by tweaking the memory, which I therefore think AMD should have had more guidance in their review about how you can tweak the FCLK. You can tweak to higher memory speeds and they should have shipped 
faster memory kits with their review kits. That's totally fair game, by the way. Intel ships lightning fast DDR5 with a lot of their reviewer kits, and it's so that they show their products in the best possible light. Now, I'm not proposing that AMD should have shipped anything that wouldn't have been stable long term, but it's clear that Zen 5 can go above DDR5 6000. It clearly can, and it's also obvious that it benefits with higher performance when you do that. AMD should have done that. And, well, they didn't, though. And so most reviewers won't report on Zen 5 in its best possible light, at least not consistently. And that is AMD's fault, not the fault of reviewers. It is up to AMD to properly configure their products with the right TDPs, to properly support their products with finished software for consistent performance at launch, and to give good guidance to reviewers on how to get the most out of their products and to ship the best possible review kits so that you have the right components to put your products in the best possible light. That is on AMD to do that. That is their job. And today they failed to do their job. Were you to portray Zen 5 in the best possible light, it seems actually to me like a great architecture, especially when you consider its efficiency and the fact that Zen 5 CCDs are smaller than Zen 4 CCDs. So any efficiency and performance uplifts is almost like gravy, considering they're almost using the same node that they used with Zen 4. That's really impressive. And this is just one of the biggest self-owns I've ever seen. And it was completely avoidable. I mean that, by the way, it was completely avoidable. I want to now explain what AMD could have done better today. And then more importantly, I want to discuss what I think AMD can do to turn things around for how Zen 5 is perceived. And I even want to highlight why I think that X3D parts are going to massively surprise people with their performance uplift after these terrible reviews today. But first, an ad from a sponsor. This piece of content is brought to you by FlexiSpot and their roster of high-quality standing desks. Recently, I upgraded my studio with the FlexiSpot L-shaped standing desk E1L. And I have to say that this thing is awesome. The E1L has an incredibly sturdy design that is safe with collision detection, and it does so quietly when it moves with dual motors that you can easily operate with the included controller. And of course, it's also reversible and comes with an outstanding warranty. And you know, I've really enjoyed using this product, genuinely. Some videos work better when I'm standing, and I've been using a treadmill now too, so that it's easy to jump on and get some exercise while I'm working at my desk. Genuinely, we use a lot of FlexiSpot products here at my family, and that's because they make fantastic high quality products. And thus, if you want to support Moore's Law is Dead and maybe get one of these fantastic products for yourself, click on the link in the description and follow the directions below to get the best price on their products during their August Tech Day sale. If you do, you'll be supporting the channel and you'll also be getting yourself one of the best possible deals on the, one of the best possible standing desks you can buy. So check out FlexiSpot Desks today. All right, so now let me outline the four things AMD should have done differently today to make this launch day a celebration of next-gen performance and not a fanboy battlefield littered with confusion. The first one is the most obvious one. AMD should have given the 9700X a 105 watt TDP. Just let it dynamically boost to 135 watts like Zen 4 did, or maybe even up to 170 watts in bursts. Honestly, if they did that, they could have marketed the 9700X as having 7800X3D tier gaming performance and then also, you know, nearly i7 or R9-7900X multi-threading performance as Linus and Derbauer both demonstrated it is capable of if you give it enough power. This would have made the chip feel like a complete and utter monster for the price. Now, secondly... They should have launched these chips on the same day as the 9950X and the 9900X. Were they to have launched the 9950X at the same time as the 9700X, what people would have concluded is, yeah, it's around last-gen flagship performance and single threading, but man, look at the 9950X extending the single threading lead. And I do suspect that when you turn PBO on, the 9950X is going to have monstrous multi-threading performance at Intel power consumption levels, which... It's using the same energy as Intel. I don't see why that's unfair. People would have said, look at how it's best in this scenario. Look at how Zen 5 is best in that scenario. Instead, they're not seeing the best of literally anything, whether it's gaming or multi-threading right now, and they're just going, this doesn't really seem like an uplift. And heck, you know what? I'm just going to say this too. Point number three is that I think that these chips should have launched at the end of August. I really do think AMD is rushing Zen 5. It was clear that Strix didn't quite at the software already. It's clear that the 9700X, 9600X had some inconsistencies consistencies in performance. AMD, you're rushing this way too much. These products should have come out later. 
And, you know, delaying them to the end of August wouldn't have just helped with the overall stability and consistency of the software. It also would have allowed them to put together more impressive reviewer kits with faster memory, better overclocking guides, more answers to when you should tweak the memory higher or the FCLK. All of that more time would have really helped with just, again, portraying these processors in their best light. But AMD didn't do any of that. And finally, the fourth thing that I think AMD royally screwed up today was not announcing the release date and pricing of Zen 5 X3D products yet. Full stop, we should know what they're going to perform like, cost, and when they're going to launch. Right now, all people know is that they have been disappointed by the 9700X. But if they knew that the 9800X3D was coming out in a month or two, and AMD even had some early performance charts out there saying it'll be, I don't know, 20 or 30% better, everyone would go, oh, well, that makes sense. What's launched today isn't the best. It's just kind of actually at the bottom half of the stack. And pretty soon, something 20, 30% better than this is coming out. And well, that's going to wipe the floor with the competition. You know what? Either I, you'd be someone who goes, I, I don't need X3D's performance. I'm not going to pay extra for it. I'm just going to get this more efficient thing that's a little better than Zen 4 now. Or you'd be saying, I can't wait to wait for that. But now, nobody really wants to buy this because Zen 5 has been painted in a bad light. And nobody's waiting for X3D because nobody knows if it's coming out anytime soon. All they know is Zen 5 got a bunch of bad reviews. And I do actually want to now summarize everything I've just said and, and really paint a picture for how today could have looked. Seriously consider all those points I just said and add them all up. Imagine if, sure, we wouldn't have had Zen 5 reviews yet today because I said they should have delayed it, but in a couple weeks from now, we would have had a 105 watt 9700X come out that chart tops single threading performance, at least narrowly beats the 14900KS in gaming, and then has the same multi-threading performance as like an i5-14600K. Meanwhile, reviewers would have praised how efficient it is at 65 watt eco mode, but praised the performance at stock settings. Additionally, they would have noted that if you get faster memory kits, you can boost performance even more, extending AMD's lead, and because, again in my scenario, the 9950X would have launched on the same day, nobody would have cared that the 9700X, again, at 105 watts, not at 65 watts, would have been slightly better than the 14900K in gaming and slightly better than the 14600K multi-threading. They would have said that was impressive in the mid-range, but the 9950X, that's even 10% faster than that when you enable PBO. AMD now has the best flagship. Oh, and everyone would have said... Imagine how cool the 9950X3D is going to be. We've already taken all of the benchmark crowns with base Zen 5. Can't wait to see what X3D is going to be. But instead, everyone's confused. Nobody's excited for the flagship anymore. And nobody is mentioning X3D because AMD is being perplexingly coy about it again. All right, so I think I made it clear that I think that AMD has screwed up today. But what can they do to unscrew the situation moving forward? Simple. The first thing I think they should do is... Before the 9950X even launches, AMD needs to announce the 9800X3D immediately, tell us what it will cost, and give us a vague idea of how it will perform. Maybe I'll be proven wrong, but I genuinely expect Zen 5 X3D products to be 15 to 30% faster than the 7800X3D. It seems clear that they could use some more bandwidth, Vcash is going to help with that bandwidth, and I also, you know, exclusively leaked that Zen 5 X3D is going to be able to run at higher clocks than Zen 4's X3D. Unlike with standard Zen 5 versus standard Zen 4, this could be a 30% or more boost. Don't marry me to that number, but I think people are going to be surprised how big the uplift is between Zen 4 to Zen 5, X3D to X3D, versus what happened with the standard variants. People need something right now to get excited about, and I do think this would get them excited. Next, I also think that if the 9800X3D is going to be ready in the next month or two, I would delay the launch of the 9950X and the 9900X so they launch on the same day as the X3D products. This would give AMD time to make sure that their software and BIOSes are extra polished for when the actual gaming and multi-threading flagships, the 9950X and the 9800X3D actually come out. It would also ensure that on said review day, Everything is portrayed in the best light in every direction. I really cannot stress this enough. I want to do it again. It is so important to launch the flagships with the other products so that people are able to see 
how good everything is in every direction. If AMD were to have launched the 9950X and the 9700X and ideally a 9800X3D on the same day, then you'd have some people who would push PBO on the 9950X and talk about how incredible its peak multi-threading performance is. And then in a different video, you'd see somebody raving about the 9800X3D's incredible gaming performance. No, they aren't the same chips. The 9950X will not game like the 9800X3D, and the 9800X3D will not have the productivity performance of the standard chips. But you know what people will do? They'll just share a chart of AMD topping gaming performance with the X3D, and someone else will share a chart of AMD topping multi-threading performance with the 9950X. And overall, people will say, Zen 5 is awesome because it can do this over here and this over here. But you have to launch them at the same time so that you can share the best aspects of your architecture at the same time. And by the way, if for some reason Zen 5 X3D products aren't actually going to be ready for, I don't know, six months or something, which is possible, you know, we don't know for sure when something's ready until we're sure, then I would say that immediately AMD should be working to launch a 9800X that boosts to 5.7 gigahertz with a 170 watt TDP. Just, you need to get that out. And I would say delay the 9950X. If it takes you a month to launch that, whatever. Delay the 9950X and then launch it with a 9800X and a 9900X. Like at the end of September, it would be worth it. You need to have that flagship gaming chip next to the flagship multi-threading chip at the same time. And that's not what the 9700X is in its current configuration. Oh, and then again, that would just give you time to ship these with the latest X870 motherboards and also the best RAM possible. So again... They are shown in their best light. And yeah, so that's basically going to do it for what I have to say about the 9700X and 9600X today. I guess there's the obligatory question that you're supposed to answer at the end of a video like this, which is, do I recommend them? No, obviously I don't recommend them. And I haven't been recommending anybody wait for them for gaming for months now. I've been saying, just get discount 7800X3Ds. X3Ds. When we saw the 16% IPC thing confirmed, we knew the 7800X3D would at least win in gaming by a little. Today, it's won by a lot because of all of the mistakes AMD has made that they didn't need to make. In fact, I suspect in the short term, assuming AMD doesn't take any of the advice I said today, which who knows if they will, that I think the 9950X is probably the only product I'm going to like out of the Zen 5 lineup. I think with PBO, people will actually be surprised that it is notably better than the 9700X in single threading and wildly better than the 7950X in multi-threading if you're willing to push power consumption. But yeah, that's just for creators, and that's not out today, even though it should be. And really, the only other thing I, I, I think I want to say in this video is, it just comes to mind here, it's just so funny how many guests I've had on broken silicon who are veterans of the industry and when i ask them like why did intel push this product too hard or why is intel putting these ridiculous claims that are misleading and laughable in their you know advertising slides for their products i'm always told the same thing and that's that Intel doesn't know how to not be number one. They can't take being number two. They always have to find a way to pretend they're the best at everything, even if they're not. Well, I have to say that today what I've learned about AMD is, yeah, maybe Intel doesn't know how to not be number one, but AMD still does not know how to be number one themselves.